To the people on the internet, the time has come. The, the reckoning, reckoning begins. begins. Your boy got himself a shaker cup. <laughs> After many, many months of shilling gamer subs like mad, my favorite thing to do, we have ourselves a goddamn shaker cup. It's here, the official Bricky Waifu Shaker Cup. Do you see the gal on here? If it's, if it's not great at focusing, I'm sure there'll be a thing in the background. Skater, put a thing in the background. Long white hair, absolutely. A bit more toned, abs, obviously. Bikini, hit it. Legally distinct mark on the face, of course. She wants you to do the diddle thing, maybe, but most likely to serve in a glorious army. Legally distinct? I think so. The Bricky Shaker Cup is available now, and you should get it while it is hot. But if you're thinking, Bricky, what should I put in this? Well, how about my top 10 favorite gamer subs flavors? From number one to number 10, all of them incredible, but listed regardless, and an addendum for those that are caffeine free. This Shaker Cup is available now in the description of this video. You may use code Bricky as well at checkout to get a discount on your order. A massive amount of profits goes to yours truly. And a huge thank you to Gamer Subs for sponsoring and for getting me this beautiful, beautiful cup. Go out there and get it. I'm gonna take one more sip for the camera, slow it down, throw some sexy music in there, and I'll see you guys soon. Hello everybody, my name is Bricky, currently stuck in the walls of the most prodigious school in the Imperium by punishment for falling asleep during class. God bless the Skola Progenium. Many of you have come across my Every Faction Explained video. Firstly, thank you. Secondly, we are here to dig a little deeper. Space Marines are the quintessential poster boys of Warhammer 40,000. When people think 40k, they think Space Marines, but there are many types of space marines formed from 20 separate legions. We are going to rattle them off in order and give you a quick rundown of each one. A disclaimer, like in my Every Faction Explained video, this is a mix of accuracy and memes. If I say the Salamander's Legion specializes in hugging children and petting puppies, they aren't exactly doing that, mostly. I would like to bet this creature. But you can infer that they care about civilians and are a bit kinder than the average space marine. A space marine being a genetically modified super soldier that's had a million new and terrifying organs shoved into them, refrigerators strapped to their bodies, and are so far above the average human that they are referred to as demigods instead. Each space marine has a father, unlike you, a primarch, which is basically an even bigger space marine that was forged in a lab by the god emperor of mankind, that gigantic golden dude you see everywhere who is both the leader and now the martyr of humanity. The Primarchs are his 20 sons built in a lab who lead 20 legions of space marines who are their sons, not from a lab, but rather a dissection table, giving them the powers and skills of their associated Primarch via a gene seed, a special organ carrying the genetic makeup of their Primarch and, you know, their seed. So if Jagatai Khan of the White Scars has the genetic makeup that wants him to go really, really fast, then his sons, the Space Marines, also want to go really, really fast. I should note that I am only referring to the legions this time around. If you're interested in sub factions, like let's say the Black Templars, then it's not going to be here. However, I do have a excellent Black Templar video. I'd argue it's probably the most accurate one I can think of. It goes through the whole lore, everything about them. It's a very long video and I'll put it in the description. Just look up Black Templar video in the description. You'll get what you need. And now with the easy explanation out of the way, let us begin with our first Legion. When that's the round table, we dance where we're able. Dark Angels. Allegiance? Loyal. <laughs> Primark Lion L. Johnson. A duelist. A knight. A real asshole, I'm not gonna lie. The single word descriptor? Paranoid. The Dark Angels are our first Legion, hailing from the death world known as Calabam. 
their Primark Lion L. Johnson's what happens when you try to make the side profile Chad meme into a genuine character. He is a master tier duelist, a brilliant strategist, and an overall dick. There are few situations he isn't prepared for and few fights he isn't ready to lead head on. This makes the Dark Angels have a very Knights of the Round Table vibe. They look like the Knights of Old with these large suits of power armor, often donning robes and hoods. Their names also follow this. They have like Ezekiel, Azrael, Belial, Samuel, and so on. However, the common thing associated with Dark Angels are the Fallen, a part of their faction that turned traitor against the Imperium, and they are very heavily trying to expunge all knowledge of them from existence. Fallen? What Fallen? Never heard of any Fallen. Do you know about the Fallen? We're gonna take you away and mind probe you to make sure you have never heard of the Fallen that definitely don't exist. And if they do exist, which they don't, we will find them even though they don't exist. They love their interrogations. They thrive in it. Lionel Johnson is a scorched earth policy sometimes and it's given to his sons in force, which makes sense considering that when the Lion heard of a Chaos Primarch on a homeworld different Primarch, whose mom was there, he was like, Let's nuke it. The Dark Angels are a special group where they formulate themselves into three different factions. The Deathwing Terminators, slow moving, tough phalanx. The Raven Wing, fast jet bikes and flyers. And the Green Wing, which is your standard Marines. They are a jack of all trades, but not in the sense where they're good at everything, but rather they have a lot of things that are good at specific things. Like instead of 20 people that have a multi-tool, they instead have 20 people with gigantic power tools for every job imaginable. If you like being suspicious about everyone and everything in your surroundings, but you also like to have a whole lot of deep night type lore, run the Dark Angels. The One Piece! The One Piece is real! Our second Legion is a special one. <laughs> if you can see, yeah, the numbers all go to 11. The Emperor's Children. Allegiance? Traitor. Primarch? Fulgrim. A perfectionist. An artist. A sneaky snaky snake. And the single word descriptor? Perfection. The Emperor's Children are all about the pursuit of perfection. Perfection in all they do. Perfection in war, in artistry, and perfection in every other aspect of life. Their armor is a gleaming pink, purple, and gold. Their ships have spires of gorgeous marvel and gold statues in their honor. Fulgrim is a man who believes the pursuit of perfection is the goal of all things, and I mean, look at him! Can you truly tell me that he is not perfect? The hair, the features. As Primarchs go, he is the one you look at and if 40k had a guy that would give you the best sex you've ever had and never call you back this is the fucking guy which is why this pursuit of decadence led them to the evils of chaos yes emperor's children are our first chaos legion and not just a normal one one devoted to you guessed it slanesh the prince of pleasure god of unspeakable excess the emperor's children in their pursuit are now horrifyingly mutated beings through slanesh's great will they torture and maim to feel perfection through pain, they screech and attack with sonic weaponry for perfection through sound, and they slaughter, aiming for perfection in war. Fulgrim himself lost the battle against Slanesh as a demon sword corrupted his mind and transformed him into the sexy man he was, into the sexy snake he is now. A demon Primarch corrupted and bringing his legion's will by himself. As far as Emperor's children go, they are some bad people. They do horrible, horrible things to anyone and everything. In fact, they're such trolls that their battle cry is for the Emperor, despite being horribly mutated and corrupted. If you've ever taken a little too much of a drug or, or maybe the music at the concert was too loud and you didn't bring any earplugs or whatever the reason. You just take all those things and you dial it and you dial it and you twist it and the knob breaks. And that is the Emperor's Children. God is dead. God we mean is dead. And we have killed him. The Iron Warriors. Allegiance, traitor. Primarch, Percherabo, a warlord, a siege smith, an incel. Single word descriptor? 
Siege. Continuing the trend of our Chaos Legions, we have the Iron Warriors led by Primarch Percherabo of Olympia. To understand the Iron Warriors though, one must first understand Percherabo. A man so bitter, coffee beans run for light. A man who hates the world and everyone in it, who never got recognition for his deeds, who hates his brothers and hates their accomplishments even more. Someone so laughably petty, so incredibly bitter that he goes full circle to becoming likable. Why? Because he's competent. The Horus Heresy. We didn't talk about the Horus Heresy. Intermission. So Horus was the emperor's favorite son, right? You know, so the emperor walked into his room. Horus said, dad, dad, I just gifted 150 subs to Amaranth and she said my name a ton and she loved me for it. I really think that I might get to meet her one day. And it Kind of played out something like this. Your feelings for her are not real. They are real to me! And then it started playing out a little bit more like this. Let the seas boil. Let the stars fall. So it takes the last drop of my blood. Yeah. So Iron Warriors, the Horus Heresy wouldn't have gotten shit done without Peter Turbo. Imagine an entire faction that is the personification of brutal industrialism, where you serve the Legion until your dying breath. You build and you kill and you siege and you kill and you literally summon demons just to take them and trap them in machines and use them as cannon fodder. This is a thing they do. They summon demons to trap and use as shock troops. The Iron Warriors are siege warfare incarnate. They are heavy weapons. They are tanks. They are turrets. And they don't die. They hate Imperials. They hate Imperial Fists. Do you need a pacifier, Iron Baby? No! No, I don't! They are bitter incarnate. Percherabo and the Iron Warriors don't serve the Chaos Gods because they like them. They serve them because fuck you. Come on, guys. Let's go. Not another speeding ticket. I'll fight it in court, but I don't think they're going to accept gotta go fast as a medical condition. The White Scars. Allegiance, Loyalist. Primark, Jagatai Khan. A speed demon, a plain strider, a roast god. Single word descriptor? speed. Hailing from Chagoras. The White Scars are all about speed. They love melee, but they love it even more when they are doing it from a motorcycle or land speeder. Or honestly, just running really damn fast. The White Scars are honestly forgotten about a lot, and that's lore accurate. They are a legion that doesn't seek the recognition or glory from the combat they engage in. They engage in it because it is their duty and because they love it. Not in the insane slaughter enjoyment of loving it, but in the thrill of the fight. They are known as the laughing killers because they ride into battle with a smile on their face and a chuckle in their throat. And as you can tell by their Primarch's name, they are Mongolian based. Remo move horses and replace them with motorcycles and land spears, and that's your style. They are heavily based on the old times of Genghis Khan, and consider this is 40k and everybody's evil. You know, that fits. The white scars are actually physical scars on their body, going back to their heritage on Chagoras. The Khan himself is kind of a dickhead, but, but a reasonable one. He thinks ahead, he's intelligent, he's patient. He is often underestimated because he doesn't scream his accomplishments from the rooftops, which is what makes him and the white scars dangerous. His skills are kept at bay, only to be truly shown when the time is needed. The White Scars are a forgotten legion often, but that doesn't diminish their accomplishments. All it does is surprise those who underestimate them. Speed, awesome Mongolian vibe they got going on, and if you really like to stab people, that's the White Scars for you. Shameless thirst break. This is dog. Woof, 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 woof. Woof, bitch. The Space Wolves. Allegiance? Loyalist. Primarch? Lehman Russ. A Viking? A Savage? The Undertaker. Single word descriptor? Wolf, 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 wolf. There's so many goddamn wolf units. Skater, how many units in the Space Wolves Codex have the word wolf in their name? The Space Wolves are the sixth legion and hail from Fenris, a frozen wasteland of a world with their Primarch, Lehman Russ. I don't really need to spend a whole lot of time talking about the Space Wolves because it's very obvious who they are. They are the second most like obvious what their shtick is legion in the 20 legions besides the world eaters. When you look at the Space Wolves behind, what do you see? Do you see Vikings in space? You've done it. 
Congratulations, you have found Vikings in space. But they have as much in common with a regular Marine as an all day Viking with, with like a Roman soldier. You see, as a space Marine, your body is so enhanced that you filter out poison and so you can't get drunk. The space wolves distill a special mead out of a horrible poisonous plant that would kill a normal human so they could get drunk. They have fangs in their mouths. They sometimes cannibalize their enemies. Yeah, yeah they, sometimes they eat people because they gain knowledge about them from there and about battle plans. The space wolves are savages. They're raiders, they're Vikings. But despite all of this, they are loyal to their core. Lehman Russ is an egotistical guy who just shouts stories and tales of his accomplishments everywhere they can. But at the same time, he was so damn loyal that instead of gunning down his foes, he hit him with a fucking backbreaker to show his devotion, his devotion to wrestling. If you want Vikings in space, you found it. Play the Vikings in space. We're going to build the wall. We have no choice. We have no choice. Build that wall. Build that wall. Build that wall. The Imperial Fists. Allegiance, loyalist. Primark, Rogel Dorn. A builder, a phalanx, and he needs a hand. Single word descriptor, Fortify. The Imperial Fists are led by Primarch Rogel Dorn, their homeworld of Inuit. However, they themselves are actually a fleet-based chapter, with their main source of recruitment coming from an enormous moon-sized ship called the Phalanx. The Fists are a chapter you think of when you think of duty. They love to serve. The love to serve and the inability to be moved. Rogel Dorn is an architect, a master builder, and basically a rock in brain and body. A lack of humor or ability to lie shows that he is as blunt as the weapons of war he creates. Not the swords he makes, but like blunt, strong weapons. The fists are the same. Take your archetypical American Marine style look, a buzz cut, a hard sense of duty, and then throw in some power arm and a love for building defenses and you have the imperial fists they are immovable when you find a spot they're ready to defend you you can't breach them their knowledge of defensive warfare is paramount without them the horus heresy would have been so much more effective but thanks to their insane and immovable tenacity the imperium lives today and let's not forget that iron warrior and imperial fist rivalry want to know why the iron warriors are so bitter these guys are the reason why. Hey guys, bring the thing. Where is he going? Hey, hey, that could have killed me. Hey guys, we missed. Get another! Dorn and Perturabo are basically two sides of the same coin. One is just a bit more level-headed and got better jobs. If you want to be defensive, to be good at everything space marines are good at, bolters, heavy weapons, vehicles, you want a classic military fighting force, start fisting. I am having a very bad day. This, today, is one of the worst days. Oh boy. Oh boy, here we go. The Night Lords. Allegiance, heretic. Primarch, Conrad Kurz. A sadist, a vigilante, the presso espresso. Single word, fear. The Night Lords are my favorite legion, hailing from the Stromo and their Primarch, Conrad Kurz. They are a traitor legion from a planet known as the Sunless World or the World of Endless Night. Nostromo is a horrible hive city that is known for being host to some of the worst gang violence, murder, and working conditions around. The only thing keeping the population in check is the suicide rate. The Night Lords followed in the footsteps of their Primarch, a man who believed in a twisted sense of justice and that the only way to make humans compliant is through fear. Fear. The Legion's lesson has been lost on them as their ranks were repopulated by gang members, murderers, arsonists, torturers, and other words I can't say on YouTube as young as 12 years old. Murderers before they were even teenagers raised to become demigods. Now fear is what they sow and flesh is what they reap. The Night Lords are 
scum. They are the exact opposite of all other legions. They torture and they maim and they flay because they think it's fun. They run away often so they can come back and kill you with more numbers. They prey on the innocent and the weak. They kill normal civilians because it's easy and flee any battle where they don't possess overwhelming odds. They are the antithesis of normal space marines. They are scum. One time, a world did not comply to their demands, so they raided one of their ships and brought it into atmosphere. The crowds cheered and clapped as it appears that they had won the battle, and the airlocks opened, and the skinned and flayed bodies of the crew were thrown down in the populace. In other words, a legion of gangers and criminals. Add together a heavy Slavic influence to them, and you've got my favorite faction. If you have not done the dishes for five years, so embarrassed when people come over here. Well, what does it matter? You bring them over, you kill them! Vampires don't do dishes. The Blood Angels. Allegiance? Loyal. Primarch? Sanguinius, an angel, a vampire, a deadass <clears throat> motherfucker. Single word descriptor? Blood. The Blood Angels are Ninth Legion, hailing from the homeworld of Baal, with their Primarch, Sanguinius. The Blood Angels are a tragic tale with one of the best Primarchs, one beloved by almost everybody, a genuine angelic figure who led his people to glory, killed by the hands of the traitor Horus before the Emperor's eyes. The death of their Primarch led the entire Legion to madness as their gene seed malfunctioned and created something known as the Black Rage. The Blood Angels degrade over time, experiencing something called the Red Thirst, which gives them a genuine vampiric thirst for blood. As their minds degrade and break down, they get angrier and angrier, becoming berserk killing machines with no other goal than to tear everything in sight apart. But they don't see it as that. They see themselves there, at their Primarch's demise, with Horus in sight. And to them, it's time for vengeance. That space marine over there, that chaos space marine, that's Horus. Kill him. That orc war boss over there, Horus. Kill him. That Tyranid swarm, 1,000 Horuses. Horai. Kill them all. Did your toast come out a little bit burnt? Horus sabotaged your toaster. Destroy the toaster. Destroy it. Do it. Do it. Kill your toaster. Do it. This slow, debilitating disease takes over the blood angels and it gives them this angelic, vampire, and Catholic inspired imagery. They have chalices of blood. They rest in coffins and can even use psychic powers to sprout angel wings from their bodies. They are a tragedy through and through, and the only thing that will look more tragic are the mangled bodies of those they come in contact with. I got a diesel engine. And honey, we forgot to mention, we're gonna take your job away. The Iron Hands. Allegiance, loyalist. Primarch, Ferris Manus, a machinist, an inventor, and not a great head on his shoulders. Single word, bionics. Bionics! Oh! The Iron Hands are from the home planet of Medusa and their Primarch, Ferris Manus. Does Ferris Manus have an iron hand? You fucking know he's got an iron hand. The Iron Hands believe that the flesh is weakness. But despite all of their enhancements, despite all the things that made them demigods, replacing some of the flesh with bionics will allow them to serve the Emperor more. They go harm into vehicles and dreadnoughts. Dreadnoughts being giant walking sarcophagi that have wounded space marines piloting them from the inside. Vehicles, metal upgrades. These are the things that make up this legion. Their tech marines have servo arms sticking out from all directions. They have a wide array of mechanics and extremely often replace limbs with metal ones, serving all kinds of different functions to deal with their enemies. The Iron Hands are also not particularly nice. Uh, they're kind of assholes. I mean, marines are already normally pretty big assholes, but, but they, they're a little bit up there because of their Ugh, flesh, ugh, civilians made of flesh, ugh, ugh. Because you see, the flesh is weak. Flesh is corruptible. Bionics, the strength of the machine is pure and cannot so easily be corrupted. So if you want people who have this little techno fetishistic vibe to them that love their vehicles and their walking coffins, hit up the Iron Hands. You understand, Commander? I was never here. Legion 11. <laughs>
Why, hello there. I have returned from, um, touching grass. I know. Yeah. I'm pretty cool with the grass touching him. Now let's continue our Warhammer lecture. This ruffles my jammies! Okay, so what's going on here? I am a stupid sandwich! The World Eaters. Allegiance? Heretic. Primarch? Angron. A butcher? A slaughterer? Like extremely, earth-shatteringly, unreasonably fuck-ass man. Single word descriptor? Anger. Hey you! Yeah you! Are you mad? Do you just fucking hate everything? Do you want to murder everything in sight and get rewarded for doing so? Then you should join the World Eaters. Home planet of Nuceria and Primarch Angron, who, if the name didn't suggest, is real fucking angry. Angron was raised a slave, forced to fight in gladiator pits. When he refused, they shoved old world tech into his brain, so that if he ever felt any emotion other than anger, it caused him extreme pain. All his sons, wanting to be like their dad, also put a version of these nails in their brain. So now you have an entire legion who literally feel unimaginable pain if they are feeling any emotion other than anger. Slap them with a freight train of armor, two goddamn chainsaw axes, and you can see what's gonna happen. It's no wonder they're corrupted by corn. They're honestly a surprisingly sad legion that I actually screwed up in assuming that they were all just angry murderers. I mean, they are but they didn't start out that way. Their corn corruption degraded their intelligence, their free will, and made powerful warriors into arguably even more powerful warriors, but blunt, like frothing at the mouth psycho warriors. The world eaters, like I mentioned, the space wolves, they, they wear their concept on their sleeve. They are angry. They want to kill things. They want to kill you and maybe some of their friends. And that's that's the faction. They're red, they're mad, they're gonna run at you and cause death. If you like that, you play the world eaters. Or you like it because they were, you know, at one point a lot better than that. Most of Warhammer was a lot better than that. I was once a lot better than that. That was when I was in college. I didn't finish college and neither did Angron. El is it, imus it is, Aeon. El Caesar, it's not done by sunrise, I'll cut your balls off. The Ultramarines, Allegiance, Loyalist. Primarch Rabute Gilliman. That's how, yeah, that's how it's said. An analyst, a diplomat, a blueberry boy scout. Single word descriptor, duty. When you see space marines on a box or just space marines in promotional material, notice how they are always colored blue. These are the blue space marines. The, these ones here, the ultramarines, who hail from the world of Macrog with their Primarch Rabute Gorilla Man. Ultramarines are, are the white bread of space marines, the, the grilled chicken with salt and pepper. And this is by no means an insult. They are plain Jane, but that's also because they are so goddamn good at their job. Their skill for warfare is paramount, but so is their ability for leadership. Gilliman for a while was a damn boring Primarch for all the reasons he was great, because no matter how hard you try, you don't don't win a war without logistics, without supply lines, without trade routes, without infrastructure and economy. You don't win anything without all that stuff, and Gilliman knows it. Which is why he has one of the largest standing empires in the Imperium, named Ultramar. Which is why his sons are the most recognizable of all the space marines. Which is why the only thing that rivals the weight of their victories is the weight of their egos. They are good at everything and bad at nothing. They are great at everything. Other legions can do other things better than them, but they are good at everything. The most interesting thing about the Ultramarines is their characters, as they are all now inflicted with various amounts of Ultra Depression for many reasons. Gilliman is, at the time of recording, the only playable Primarch currently on the tabletop, and the only one that has returned to the 41st millennium for the Loyalist side. He took one look at what his empire has become, and immediately wanted to fucking die. Being forced to lead everything he once hated, an Imperium rotten to its core with his sole responsibility to save it, is kind of what makes him interesting. They are a perfectly standard legion with perfectly standard ideals and great if you want a simple, clean slate. Uh-oh, stinky, funny poop, poop funny, woo! The Death Guard, Allegiance, Heretic, Primarch, Mortarian, a reaper, a poison, an ungodly stench. Single word descriptor, 
rot. The Death Guard hail from Barbaros with the Primarch Mortarium. The 14th Legion were known for their incredible resilience to damage. That's a lot of damage. Where the Imperial Fists were defensive thanks to tactics and posturing, the Death Guard were resilient because they could take a punch or, or a gut shot or, or a cannon to the chest and, and just keep on moving. They are slow, yet they are resistant, which was only confounded as a Death Guard captain Typhus, codename Dickhead, sold them out to Nurgle, god of rot and decay. Now, the Death Guard are a Nurgle-worshipping infected legion whose ability to feel pain and take damage has all but just gone away. They wade through gunfire, able to kill normal marines 10 times over and continue unharmed, all while spreading rot and disease in the name of their dark, very stinky master. Where the Death Guard enter, plague spreads. People get sick and they die. They spread debilitating disease to all around them. Why would a legion need to be anything more than very tanky when their enemies are falling over, puking, firing out of both ends, and having their skin peel off just by their presence. Entire worlds infested with a zombie rot, swarms of insects that eat flesh and metal alike, all while the Legion advances slowly, painfully, allowing the disease they spread to take its toll before they reap the lives they believe belong to them. And look at Mortarian's model, dude. The man is baller as fuck. A gigantic moth with a gigantic scythe. Come on now. The Death Guard. For my next trick! I'm gonna fucking kill myself. The Thousand Sons. Allegiance? Heretic. Primarch? Magnus the Red. A scholar. A sorcerer. A fucking nerd. Single word descriptor? Magic. The Thousand Sons hail from their homeworld of Prospero with their Primarch Magnus the Red. The final of our four major Chaos God factions, the Thousand Sons are disciples of Zeech, the Changer of Ways. Heavily inspired by their Egyptian theming, the Legion themselves are slaves to the god of trickery and change. Most of them no longer even having a physical form, reduced to just dust, piloting suits of armor at the whim of a sorcerer leader. The Thousand Sons do not deserve their fate. There's a common joke that Magnus did nothing wrong. This is untrue. He has done much wrong. However, he is very sympathetic, mainly because the Space Wolves and Lehman Russ sought to end their rivalry through the annihilation of their legion, escaping only through the assistance of the Changer of Ways and forever changed because of it. Meanwhile, magic is their main tool. Take some Lovecraftian style abilities, the eyes everywhere and potent spells to be cast at their foes, whether these are bolts of psychic lightning, reversing time itself, opening up portals to unreality or changing the very fabric of the universe. The Thousand Suns sorcery knows no bounds and they are very good at it. If you're a fan of like wizards, your classic style of spellcaster, and you want a ton of them combined with a tragic backstory and a Primarch who, like Mortarian, looks fucking baller, the Thousand Suns are for you. You fucking asshole! There's no way, you're a fucking cheater. You're such a sore loser. You're a cheater. My dad works at Nintendo! <laughs> The Sons of Horus, or the Luna Wolves, or the Black Legion. Allegiance? Heretic. Primarch? Horus, a warlord, a treasured friend, or the traitor himself. Single word descriptor? Assault. The Sons of Horus are the formal name of Horus's legion, hailing from the world of Chthonia. The Sons of Horus themselves were assault troops. The strength of their attack was some of the most powerful in the legions. While the White Scars may favor speed for their strikes, the Sons of Horus were known for their overall offensive power. It was even said that if the Sons of Horus met the Imperial Fists, they would be at a stalemate for eternity. However, the Sons of Horus are no longer because, well, They are now instead the Black Legion, led by Abaddon the Despoiler, who claims to succeed where his father failed. The Black Legion are still an offensive and assault-based force, but they act much like the Ultramarines, but for chaos. Your standard black and brass space marine who are known for recruiting in all different kinds of avenues. Anyone can become a member of the Black Legion. Anyone can swear allegiance to the War Master. You gain favor by not just one, but all four gods equally. They're 
famous line, let the galaxy burn, is the best way to describe them. It doesn't matter what the outcome is. So long as the Imperium dies, the Black Legion has done its job. They are a legion formed from hatred and spite with a clear goal in mind, as the Dark Gods are calling and the Black Legion are sure to answer. Hello, do you have a moment to talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? No. It wasn't fucking optional! <laughs> the Word Bearers, Allegiance, Heretic. Primarch, Lorgar Aurelian, a preacher, a fanatic, a choir boy. Single word descriptor? zeal. If the Black Legion answer the call of the Dark Gods, what if instead you decide to call the gods first? Well, then the word bearers are for you. The 17th Legion led by Primarch Lorgar on the planet of Colchis. Originally obsessed with worshiping the Emperor of Mankind as a god, they found that despite his divinity, he was not worthy of worship. Because you know, he raised their equivalent of Jerusalem to the ground for daring to worship him. Like, could you imagine if, if God actually showed up and was just like, Jerusalem is stupid. It just, it just destroyed the whole thing. Like, what would that do to your head? But there are gods that want worship and will reward those who do. The word bearers are chaos worshipers to a T. All chaos gods. They specialize in demonic rituals, the summoning of demons, and the mutual possession of their own troops. They welcome demons to their bodies to fight as one. They exalt the dark gods themselves for aid, and guess what? They answer. In the world of 40k, Satan doesn't just call you back. He hops in his GT Mustang and he crashes on your couch. In the world of 40k, your rituals will end with genuine results. The word bearers know this. They know through sacrifices, through devotion, through dark baptism, the gods will answer and they will be rewarded. So they use it. They bring forth demons. They bring forth possessions. They bring forth the power of the neverborn, the damned and those that hide in the dark to bear against the Imperium. Lorgar sits there, smiling, as the truth he always knew, the existence of gods and the importance of faith is a reality, and it is a tool he is using to rend the galaxy. Dear Sir Stroke Madam, fire! Exclamation mark. Fire! Exclamation mark. Help me! The Salamanders. Allegiance? Loyalist. Primark? Vulcan, a forge master, a behemoth, a very huggy boy. Single word descriptor? Fire. The Salamanders hail from Nocturne, a volcanic planet home to their Primarch Vulcan. They are the largest of the space marines, not due to numbers, but rather size. Vulcan, it, it, he is an enormous slab of beef, by far the largest of all the Primarchs. However, don't let his size fool you, as he is also the kindest. Salamanders have the juxtaposition of looking frightening, being larger than other marines, while also boasting an ashy, like, coal color skin and blazing red eyes, while simultaneously carrying around all manner of flame weaponry. So your average civilian might be spooked, but in reality, they are by far the kindest of all the legions to those civilians. Vulcan believes that to safeguard the Imperium is to, at the end of the day, I mean, safeguard its people. So unlike other legions who put their lives far and above the average human, the Salamanders spend significantly more time trying to save them, often taking numerous losses by doing so. They are very independent as well. They're forgers and blacksmiths, maintaining their own weapons and crafting versions of it. They also have the very rare privilege of being able to see their families even after becoming a space marine. They they care, which is the funny part, because the seven and a half foot tall giant with flaming red eyes who just reduced a traitor to bubbling metal says, you have nothing to fear, young citizen, take my hand. If you enjoy fire, melting things, and being the nicer of the Marines, Salamanders are for you. Saga, sneak attacks don't work if you yell it out loud. The Raven Guard. Allegiance? Loyalist. Primark? Corvus Corax. A raven. A shadow. An industrial dance, DJ. Single word descriptor? 
Stealth. The Raven Guard are the final Loyalist Legion at 19 and hail from the planet Deliverance with Primarch Corvus Corax. If it hasn't been made clear enough already, the Raven Guard are stealth specialists and proficient in all manners of assassination. Despite this, their signature winged jump pack and double lightning claw look is, well, not very stealthy. <laughs> They are named after, of course, the Raven and embody the entire concept of it as a herald of death. They are stealthy, patient hunters that have no problem with waiting and waiting and waiting until the moment to strike is at hand. It's not easy being a stealth faction when your stealth involves people in one ton of power armor, but they find a way. That more than anything should not be used to show how ridiculous 40k is even though it is, but rather to show how good the Raven Guard are at their jobs. It's not about them sneaking around you without being seen, but it's also about them having lied in wait for so long that it wasn't until they were in striking distance that you even realized they had been there. And also, if you want, you know, edgelord marines with a long black haircut, pale skin, ravens everywhere, if you want to field assassins and snipers abound, then the Raven Guard are for you. It could be in this very room. It could be you. It could be me. Obvious. The Alpha Legion. Allegiance? Heretic. Primarch? Alpharius and Omegon. Saboteurs, destabilizers, they're in your walls. Single word descriptor? Espionage. Finally, the 20th Legion, the Alpha Legion, led by Alpharius and Omegon, the only Legion to have two Primarchs who were split as twins. The Alpha Legion are heretical, we think, and specialize in destabilization of society and armies. Their entire shtick is the Hydra, because when you cut off one head, two more take its place. All of the Alpha Legion look exactly like their Primarch, olive skin, shaved head, all claim to be Alpharius, all are liars. They make the largest use of sleeper cells and cultists in the Chaos Space Marine factions because it's extremely easy to take over a planet when you poison our water supply, burn our crops, and deliver the plague onto our houses! Where the Raven Guard use stealth and sabotage to eliminate their enemies, the Alpha Legion prefer to weaken them over time with sleeper agents, impersonations, basically anything you could imagine from a hardcore spy movie or, or Cold War level espionage. Being Alpharius is not only only an honor. Being Alpharius is a requirement. There's a story of someone chasing down an Alpha Legion agent for years upon years, and when they finally catch up with them and they see them, they see that the agent is wearing the same face as their pursuer, because this was the plan all along, to kill him and take his spot. We're talking facial reconstruction surgery, we're talking hacking, we're talking political assassination and impersonation, everything. They are space marines in name only, because being a strong stoic warrior is not what the Alpha Legion is interested in. In fact, the Alpha Legion is interested in you not even knowing that the Alpha Legion is a thing. I am Alpharius. You are Alpharius. We are all Alpharius in his Lord's glorious army. Thank you everyone so much for watching this video. I hope you learned a little something. I hope if you were on the fence about what Space Marines you wanted to field, you would now have a better idea of what you want to play. Buy my gamer sub shaker. It's on sale. It's on pre-order. It's ready to go. Just get it. Just get it. Use code Bricky. It's in the description. Just get it. And a huge thank you to all of my patrons over on patreon.com slash Bricky and the members on the YouTube channel. Your names are here. I thank you a ton. You are all very generous. And uh, oh, I need to answer a question. Have you ever attempted to touch grass but end up touching the Destiny 2 loading screen? Oh, damn it. I just... Yeah. So? Come on. Obviously you're a skater.